or yours. So I did some very unscientific research um, in order to prepare for tonight. So uh, last week I went on Indeed and I searched up HR coordinator job profiles, job descriptions. And I came up with 20. And of those 20 job postings, 72% of them required between one and three years experience. And of that 72%, 40% wanted two to three years of experience in an HR role. So in my opinion, that's problematic for two reasons. Number one, HR coordinator is an entry level job. So why would anyone want to, you know, put their name in the hat for, you know, they've been already doing it for a couple of years, why would they want to take that job? So it's really, really bad from a candidate pool point of view. But more importantly, what are the skills that make up a successful HR coordinator? Customer service, problem solving, organizational skills, time management, great communication, need to be confidential, and they need to have tech skills. So they need to be good with databases, they need to be great with Excel, some social media platforms. But you know what? You don't need to have spent two or three years in HR to learn those skills. And that's the challenge that I think we really need to pay attention to because we're boxing people in and we're not opening up the opportunities uh, that are out there. And it's really, really essential that we do because we are living this right now. This whole shift to a skills economy, it's here whether we like it or not. And so we really need to be thinking about what we're doing right now. And what are we getting ourselves ready for in order to be able to thrive through the kind of disruption and change? I think Sachin Nadella, the CEO of Microsoft, said it best when he said, you need to be a learn-it-all, not a know-it-all. And it's really, really hard to be that learn-it-all if you're thinking in narrow confines of, this is my job, this is my career path, this is what I need to do to the get next level of my job. And some of our old traditional ways of building careers, it's good that we're seeing that shift now, but we still need work to do. But also how we're compensating people. There's so many um, things that we're doing in our current HR practices today that are not necessarily facilitating the shift from a focus from jobs to skills. So, I want to share three perspectives that I think are important and I, we can actually start doing some stuff right now. First of all, we need to shift our mindset. We need to focus on an individualized, a personalized approach and that theme's been coming up um, over the previous speakers. And finally, we need to look at our organizations and take a systems approach, look at how we're designing our organizations and adapting our organization design with skills in mind. So let's just take a little dive into these. So mindset shift, first of all, I have to, my pet peeve is soft skills. Um, we know from all the research that's out there that the most critical skills for the future of work and to be successful and to thrive are critical thinking, problem solving, communication, collaboration, empathy, resilience. Those aren't soft skills anymore. They're absolutely essential. They're survival skills. So we need to rename those. So that's mindset shift number one. And I wanted to show you, um, and I'll show it in a minute. There's an interesting piece, uh, a really great research report done by Royal Bank of Canada, came out at the beginning of the year. And they took a real deep dive into skills from the context of what does our next generation, what do our youth of today need to be thinking about and what skills do they need to build to ensure that we have a future ready workforce. And so what they did is they used data from the um, Employment and Social Development Canada organization they identified that there will be 2.4 million jobs created in Canada between now and 2021. 
And they further sliced and diced the data and looked across 300 occupations and 20,000 skills. And what they came up with was this. So rather than thinking about jobs and roles of the future, what they did with all that information is come up with six clusters of skills. And they further rank those clusters of skills in terms of what have the highest potential for disruption and what are the ones that are going to be more future-proof and have the lowest probability of disruption. And I just thought, what a cool way to think about it. So rather than our job descriptions, rather than it, it's not going to necessarily replace job profiles, but what a great way to look at workforce planning and thinking about what are those clusters of skills that we need and what are the ones that are really popular now, but perhaps um, five years from now, those roles are going to shift and we need something different. Again, it just gives flexibility when you're starting to think about the skills that you need to drive your organization when you think about it in buckets. Second point, individualize and personalize. Um, there's a real focus we need to make on our learning and development organizations. Um, and Stella, you've probably got some great insight into, uh, into this that hopefully we'll hear at the, uh, at the question period. Um, we focus our learning and development so much as event-driven. What online course am I taking? What workshop am I sitting in on? And, um, you know, what, how is that personalized to me? You know, everyone's sitting in the same course, they're sitting there or taking the same workshop. We need to think about learning not as an event, but we need to think about creating a learning platform that allows learning to be embedded into people's everyday workflow. It needs to be individualized and customized in a way that I can go and find out what I need to know, when I need it, in just the right amount. Because learning is always on. And so we really need to think about, uh, about how we can take our um, plans and our budgets around our learning systems now and make them more individualized and always on so they're meeting the needs of people. The other thing too with learning is how are we capturing the learning that's coming out of different activities and projects within our organization. There needs to be a mechanism to be able to capture that and share that um, in a much more effective way. And finally, systems approach. We need to think about our organizations are going through lots of iterations and restructuring and change. We need to think about how do we design for skills and integrate skills into our strategy. We're probably already doing a fair bit of that right now. Um, but we just need to keep doing that. What do we have? What's going to shift? What do we need in the future? And think about it from a skills perspective. Our structures. We know that our typical sort of hierarchical structures are really starting to shift and we're seeing a need for much more networks of teams. And so how do we create that flexibility? Skills is a fantastic match. If I have a great profile, and it sounds like Workday's got that solution, um, if I have that great profile of not only what skills people have, but what level of mastery they have, and I understand what they're motivated to do and what their interests and strengths are, wow, what a fantastic way to rapidly resource a team. And so just going around the wheel a little bit more, um, process, again, how does that information flow through your organization? How do people have access to that important information they need to do their jobs and build their skills and continue to learn? Um, people and rewards. For many of us in the room, this is where a lot of opportunity sits. I'm not going to get into the details, but you can imagine how we could shift the conversation around performance management, how we could shift the conversation around learning. Um, and also rewards, probably rewards and total rewards is one of the most sort of traditional um, areas of HR that still hasn't really been disrupted. We're starting to see some stuff on the benefit side, but really we pay for jobs. How do we pay for skills? How do we reward people for skill mastery? So these are some of the things that 
I'm thinking about when we talk about the shift to skills. And I just want to leave you with a couple of thoughts. So for those of you that are going and doing interviews tomorrow, if you don't already have this question in your interview guide, put it in. We want to start talking to people and understanding how they learn, just not what they've done. Do we have to have a computer science grad to be a, a developer? What if they have a portfolio that can clearly demonstrate their competence and ability to do the job and develop and program what you need them to do? Do we have to have the credential? Or is that just narrowing um, our talent pool? Personalized learning plan, that's a given. How are we building learning into the flow of work? That's a huge opportunity. And finally, how do we measure, how do we reward? Thank you very much.